Hey guys, so we're going to do a second part to this uh, Q&A session. I did the first session, I believe it was about 45 or 50 minutes already. Uh, I'm not sure when this is going to go live, whether it's going to be the next day or two days after the first one, but uh, this is a continuation of the quote unquote brutally honest Legends Q&A session. Uh, we're going to go in the same thread here. I think the comments are generally in the same order, so I'm starting off where we left off last time, but if anything pops up that we already answered, we'll just skip it and go to the next question here. All right, we'll start with this one. So why do you think Legends Limited units are mostly focused on melee slash range attackers instead of support or defensive roles? It feels like the meta is getting saturated with offensive units and we're missing out on more diverse strategies. Same goes for summonable ultra units. Let's keep going here. What else does he say? Uh, why not give us more tankier support ultras? Do you think the developers will ever focus on balancing the game with more defensive slash support units? Yeah, one thing we could definitely show here that supports this is if we go ultra and then we go to, um, I think there's a place where we can filter by like type of character. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Is there? Maybe there isn't. Um... But anyway, there's currently no ultra support character in the game. There's no ultra support type character in the game. So uh, that. Oh, here we go. Support type. Yeah. Look, nothing. Zero. And then we go to defense and, you know, there's a few. Turles, Kid Buu, Vegito as for the three summoned ultras that are defense type. Then we go to, I don't know, melee type. Here's what we got. <laughs> Range type. Range type. There are not that many, actually. Uh, mostly melee type, um, but there's actually zero support type. Even free-to-play ultras, they didn't give us a, a free-to-play support type. So that certainly is the case here. Uh, I think the reason why is because they most people just like offensive characters and they're willing to spend money on those characters. I think if they released a support type, like if they made Turles, for example, a support type character, I think people just wouldn't be as enticed to summon on him if he was designated as a support character because support characters are mostly looked at as secondary options for teams and i think if they were folk like i don't think we're, we're probably never going to see like an anniversary headliner that's a support type character or a legends fest headliner that's a support type character and again the main reason is just because i think that people are less likely to look at those characters as like okay i want to invest all my resources and you know try and spend money on this character i don't think that's what people are going to be doing if they're designated as support. So I think mostly it is just because uh, that's the way that most people view those types of characters. So they're looking for like when, when you're summoning on these big characters like LF and stuff like that, they're looking for who's going to be able to fill out my team as like a staple of the team. Who's going to fill it? Who's going to fill it out as like the main focus of the team? And that's not usually what support type characters do. Right. Supports, I think they generally relegate like 1% sparkings to be support types or even like free to play characters as support type stuff like that. I would be completely down if they were going to give us more of uh, LF or ultra characters as support types. I, I'm completely OK with that. Uh, I also don't really think they need to designate a character as support type for them to actually be a support type character. They don't like the, these at this point in the game, we're six and a half years in. I don't think support defense melee and ranged. It doesn't really mean much anymore. I don't even know if there needs to be a, a, a label for like what type of character we're talking about. So like if we go to characters here, like something like go tanks, like what? If you just looked at what Gotenks was doing, what would you even classify him as? Would you classify him as a ranged, melee, support, or defense type? He could be any any one of those characters. He could be any one of those types, right? He's supporting the team. He has about the same amount of offense in terms of strike and blast. And he's like a solid defensive character too. So how would you designate this character? Like what type would you give him? It's like good characters in this game do everything. So I, I don't even think we need to have labels for these types or roles of characters anymore but will they remove pv from the entire game um well i mean they, they tested it in uh, legends battle royale which to me doesn't make any sense because it's not really a way that they can gain enough and valuable enough data to, to make that determination but at least we know it's on the radar for them uh whether or not they're going to do it i have no idea 
Um, if they make a change like that, which I think will be the biggest change in the history of the game by far, uh, they will certainly need to do it in phases. I think they can't just implement like, OK, we're removing PV from the game. Go. <laughs> they can't just do that. I think it'll be we remove PV from the game. Here's a test season. Uh, we're going to also try implement, you know, change A, B and C as well. And uh, we'll determine which changes we want to, you know, keep in for layer two. And then I think we got to keep going through a bunch of these layers. Like season one will be a change to removing PV plus change ABC. Layer two would be uh, pick whatever ABC work the best and then keep that in the game without PV being in the game. And then they keep trying a bunch of supplementary or complementary changes alongside not having PV in the game. And then that's the best way they could do it. It's just a very methodical way of, of testing. And uh, that's definitely one thing that I don't think the game has done a very good job of is actually having people test things in the game because this game doesn't have like a private like a private test server or anything like that. So it's very tough to actually get players in the game to be able to test things without giving them some incentive to do it. That's why my idea for testing battle system changes is to make a separate ladder and then have people test it. But then also you got to give them like rewards for doing that. Uh, I've been on and off on Legends because when you're free to play and don't pull the meta unit, you literally can't do anything. I think I, I think we read this last time. Did we? I'll read it again anyway. But on and off on Legends because when you're free to play and don't pull the meta unit, you literally can't do anything. I pulled my favorite, my first summonable Ultra Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta not even that long after he's barely top 10 or in the bottom of it. Uh, I'm talking about, yeah, Majin Vegeta. With Fest coming up and not being ultra familiar with the game, what are the many what are the main things I can do to prepare uh, prepare me for it? I've played Dokkan for the longest time and I want to get used to both games because I like the gameplay. How does a free to play thrive in Legends? Yeah, it's tough because I think that we, we touched on this in the first video that I, that we talked about, but one of the things that they've been doing a very bad job at in Legends is actually making banners like worth summoning on. Um, I think when it comes to Anniversary and Legends Fest, it's pretty safe to assume that those banners are going to be pretty good, at least for the Part 1 units. Um, I imagine for Legends Fest, it's going to be the same format as we saw for Anniversary and prior year Legends Festivals, which is double LF for Part 1. And I think for the most part, it's probably a, a pretty safe bet to summon on, uh, you know, well, well, we'll see when the characters drop what they do and what the banners look like, but typically is a pretty safe bet to summon on the big Celebration banners. But the banners like in between Anniversary and Legends Fest are just really, really bad. Um, it's really tough as a free to play player for me to give advice besides just summon on big celebrations and just like skip everything in between. Um, it's not an easy thing to say, too, because there's a lot of good like like uh, Ultimate Gohan drops right during the anniversary part two. And it's like they intentionally bring Ultimate Gohan back on just like a nonsense banner. Like, let's pull this up. Wasn't it some, let's go to expired. Where was, here, this one, the autumn limited banner. Like, this is terrible, this is awful. Like, we know Goku and Bardock are getting in equipment, so I'm not gonna, as, as it stands right now, they're not very good. But I mean, this is a character that certainly has the potential to be pretty good with the equipment. Bad, 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 bad. And then like everything here is bad. So like they're bringing Ultimate Gohan back on a separate banner on purpose because they don't want to put him on a banner that has current new sparkings or Legends Limited characters. And so it's just very tough for me to recommend that you summon on anything outside of the uh, big celebration banners because they intentionally spread out the value across a lot of different banners. And for free to play characters, uh, for, free for free to play players, it makes it really hard to say, okay, yeah, summon on this one or summon on that one. Occasionally, we get the you know once in a blue moon opportunity when something like the Super Saiyan three Gotenks banner drops. It's actually like really really good. I actually. <laughs> I think that banner was worth summoning on for sure, even for free to play players, which is crazy. But I think in general, generally speaking, my advice would be just don't summon on anything outside of Legends Fest and Anniversary, which it, I mean, it, it does kind of suck too, because it's like the whole point of the game is to have fun getting your, your favorite characters and, 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 you know, having a bunch of different opportunities to obtain characters throughout the year. But if they keep making these banners as bad as they have been, then it's just, there's no value in, in trying to do that. There's no banner. There's there's no value in trying to go into a banner that only has like one good character on it or two good characters on it at most. So I think saving up for the big celebrations and just going all in on those is probably what you want to be doing. All right. Uh, oh, it it brought me back to the beginning. Okay. Well, we'll we'll just scroll down. 
Uh, okay, so I think this is where we were. Do you think it would be possible to see a Xenoverse 2 collab uh, campaign in the future? Uh, lots of friends have been wanting characters from the game to be added. They could make for some cool sparkings and LFs. Um, I, I, probably not. And the main reason why I'm saying that is because they probably would have done it already, right? This Xenoverse 2 has been out for a long time. Xenoverse 2 was out way before Legends dropped. And Legends hasn't done a collab with them in six and a half years. So I would doubt it. I mean, it's not 0% chance. Right, we, we did technically do a collab with Kakarot. We have not done a collab with Sparking Zero. I think there's probably a better chance we would end up doing one with Sparking Zero just because it's a newer game. Um, I would say it's not off the table, but I would say very low chance. What do you think about the current meta of counter gauge units? Uh, I, I talked about this in the first video. I'm not a fan of it. Uh, what is your ideal banner release format for the upcoming festival? Do you think somewhat copying the Dokkan Fest slash Carnival LF Ultra format for a part one and two would work better than last year? Um, so I think what's going to happen is it'll mostly be the same format of as last year, except I think they're going to add one more banner. So it'll be the same format as anniversary, Like it'll be double LF part one, double LF part two, ultra part three. Except I think the way that it'll, it'll work is I think they're going to give us game original characters. And we know the format for the game original banners is different than just typical LF step up banners. I think there's two options. I think part one is going to be double LF. I think it's just going to be normal double LF. I don't think there's going to be a game originals in part one. It's possible, but I, 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 there's no precedent for that. So I'm going to say that there's just going to be two normal LF banners part one. Part two, I think there's two choices. Part one, I, or sorry, part two, I think there's going to be either one game original banner and one normal LF banner or they could do the nightmare scenario of double game original and the reason why i'm saying nightmare is because we all know the format of game original banners is really bad we've only had one so i you know we could call that precedent or we could just assume that they're going to take a look at how the banner performed last year and maybe you know it didn't perform as well as they would have hoped so maybe they would change the format but i think we have to assume because that's the only instance of a game original banner that we've seen before. I think we have to assume that all game original banners moving forward are going to be that format until it's changed, right? I mean, it's po completely possible that it's changed, but as it stands right now, I think those are what we're looking at. I don't think they would do like an LF plus an ultra banner at the same time, just because the ultra banner releasing at the same time as the LF banner would cannibalize the, the LF banner sales. Right? I think the, like, the main thing people have to understand when it comes to ultras is the reason why they even like conceptualized and created the ultra rarity in the first place is to make it more enticing to summon on. They like if you look at the difference between what an ultra character is and what an LF character is, it, they just make it more flashy and they just make them generally better than LF characters. They could like they could easily just make LF characters as good as ultra characters and there wouldn't really be much of a difference but they just artificially designated those characters as a new rarity and just said okay here here's a lower rate banner here's a worse format banner spend more money trying to get this character that's exactly what an ultra is um so i think if they released an ultra banner at the same time as an lf banner everybody would just congregate and summon on the ultra banner and then you know very few people would summon on the lf banner so I don't think they would do both at the same time, um, and we haven't seen precedent for that either. Remember, they still refuse to put old ultras on new ultra banners. We've never seen a single banner where we have more than one ultra on it at once. So, <laughs> I, for some reason, they are just very steadfast in not wanting to diminish the perceived value of ultra characters, which... I mean, I understand it, but it's just very, very scummy. Uh, we saw this. Uh, why isn't Toshi or the devs in general more open about future updates slash ideas they would want to implement? I think doing more frequent Legends newsletters once per month would be really good. Player insight is far better than dev insight. Uh, might as well share Hold on. Some of these new ideas through content creators. Imagine uh, me versus Riot and video where you both go and ride into a new playground of theirs and test how the game feels with four equipment slots. You each cho choose two to three different scenarios and they will get direct feedback from you and us. Um, what do I want to say about this? 
I think so it just in turn like not even talking about this bottom part but like just the fact of them being more open I think is definitely a good idea we have seen cases where they have done like development newsletters before but it's not it's not consistent right they've done development newsletters they said okay here's what we're thinking about doing in the future et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. um and they've done that before but it's it's not consistent number one and then number two we've seen a lot a lot of instances a lot, this is not just like one or two times this is like a lot where they've talked about future you know things they would want to implement into the game and they just never do it so i think to me that just says that there's a there, there's a lot of disorganization with the development team and they're not confident in being able to talk about certain upcoming mechanics without you know being sure that it's actually going to be implemented the guild update uh the the legends limited z abilities right there's just there's there's so many examples of things that they they talk about that just never get implemented and i don't think they would want to risk that happening because i don't think they have the ability at all to you know plan in the future i, I they have no planning capabilities they just they just can't manage it and so that's why I think they won't do anything like this. Um, this one, I don't know. This is probably more so, you know, with like content creators and stuff like that. I mean, there's probably other games that do this. Um, other games that probably are, I don't know, considerably more organized than, than the Legends team is. Um, this is probably more so of a factor to do with like Shueisha and Toei as opposed to Bandai, I would imagine. I uh, talked about this. Characters need to start canceling more effects than what they cur would currently cancel. We're getting into the point where having overwhelming offense and offensive mechanics is the norm. Uh, or maybe the, even starting canceling specific unique gauges. That's something that the game was going to start doing soon. Um, canceling unique gauges, I think, is a really bad idea. I've talked about this before, but I just a lot of characters have like their entire identities in their unique gauges. And I, I just don't think canceling unique gauges is, would be very healthy for the game. I just think it, it would make the game very bland. So how does canceling no switching or something like negate substitution up when we already see this with the yellow LF Spirit Bomb Goku, where he gives debuffs to the enemies when he gets the effect no switching? Perhaps outright canceling it is something we can see. Uh, maybe. Um, so one issue with the game right now also that I don't think I've specifically mentioned is... What's the best way to explain this? There's such a big emphasis on burst damage right now. And I think there's a major difference between burst damage and just like consistent damage, like combo potential damage. A really good example of this, I think, is Tree of Might Goku. Tree of Might Goku, when you add up how much damage he's doing throughout his combo, it's actually like a very high amount of damage. Like he's doing a lot of damage. He's got double card draw speed. He's got a lot of uh, ways to draw cards. He's got cover nullification up a lot of the time. He's got refills with, with the green card. He's uh, got a lot of ways to do damage. That's, that's pretty consistent. Um, and then when we take a look at a character like Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta has pretty good combo potential, but he also has insane burst damage potential with the ultimate. The ability for certain characters to do tons and tons and tons of damage with just one mechanic, aka, you know, Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta's ultimate, um, I think that is a big difference between characters being good offensively and not good offensively. Because I would say Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta is like a very good offensive character. Majin Vegeta with his lock-in ultimate, which you can kind of associate with being a burst damage mechanic is a really good offensive character. But like when you ask people, do they think that Tree of Mike Oak was a good offensive character? Uh, people would probably say yes, and some people would probably say no, but it's just because he's not a good burst damage character. Um, in terms of when it comes to canceling effects, I, I mean, it depends on what you would want to cancel. Um, when you take a look at the meta we're in right now, if you had more effects that cancel things, like we'd have even a bigger timer count meta. And I think at, at a high level, we are already in a pretty deep timer count meta with Turles and, and Tree of Might Goku and Majin Vegeta even with the, with the gauge. It just becomes very hard to maintain priority and, and, and even like just get hits in on the opponent. So I'm not sure how much canceling other things would help the situation right now. Um, but we'll see. 
because uh, he's he's mentioning uh, overwhelming offensive mechanics. So I don't know. Um, I don't know if we're really in an overwhelming offensive mechanic environment right now. Do I actually enjoy playing the game? Uh, yes, I enjoy playing the game, but I think this year has been very bad. Do you think we'll see any Vegeta Clan characters for Festival? It's possible. I think, you know, Vegeta, Vegeta himself maybe could be uh, in one of the Part 2 characters. I think maybe as a tag character, he could be in something. In, in terms of like a standalone Vegeta, I would say probably not. But as part of a tag character, I could definitely see it, yeah. Do you think there's a chance there will be nullify enemies counter for a set number of counts like cover null? Also, why do you think Vegeta gets no love in these games by being the second main character? I mean, well, we <laughs> just got the best character in the game by far with Maj and Vegeta, so I, uh, yeah. Um, nullify enemies counter for a set number of timer counts. So you're talking about like the salt chain mechanic, because we already have that technically, right? Few it's funny how we have this in the game, but like nobody, no, <laughs> nobody gets to see it. Because it's such a bad mechanic, the fused Gojito Blues uh, assault chain mechanic. I think they should have other mechanics like that, yeah. But obviously they should actually be good this time. Do you think they should change the equipment upgrades and stuff? Because I spent over a thousand erasers on one of those Defiant Gohan equips just to get a Z. It's a little sucky trying to get better defense for my low star boost saga teams because I don't want to spend more CC. Uh, I will just tell you guys that the, after, as somebody that has a le, like over 1,100 God rank equips, I don't think anybody in the world has better equipment than me. Okay, so this is coming from somebody who has very in-depth knowledge of how the equipment system works. I am telling you guys straight up, the equipment system in this game is a scam. If you look at every single time they have improved quote unquote improved the equipment system or added different functions to the equipment rerolling system. Every single time they have done that, they have subsequently for every piece of equipment that has come out after those updates, they have decreased the rates of each equipment. So let me just think. Um, they introduced the guaranteed upgrade system and then they introduced the secure upgrade system. I think the secure upgrade system no longer exists in the game. Um, but when they introduced those those systems, every equipment that released after that update, okay, every single piece of equipment that released after that update had lower rates for each slot. They introduced the uh, the one we just had, the uh, one where you can upgrade like all at once. What do they call it? The batch upgrade system. Um, they they, upgrade, they introduced number one, the batch upgrade system, and then number two, the ability to reroll the first slot with the uh, whatever the the uh, item they're selling in the shop, right? Once they implemented that, every equipment that releases past that point has a lower rate. So every single time it seems like they're going to make a good change to the equipment system, they always new like sort of neutralize the effect by making the reroll rates lower. So that in that way, it's a scam. And then also, let's take a look here. Let me open up the equipment system screen here. Uh, I think every time they release an equipment like this, there's some other examples here, like Super Vegeta, Gohan, there is no reason for any player to ever spend resources on these. These things cost hundreds and hundreds of slot removers for an equipment you're going to be using on one specific character that's going to make them like mediocre. Like characters that get, a, you have to understand these Zenkai characters that get these equipment go from horrible trash too mediocre. <laughs> is that worth hundreds of erasers, billions of zenny, and just like tons and tons of resources, souls, and all those things? The answer is no. There's no chance that this is worth it. You're much better off spending your resources on equipment like this that you're going to be using on tons and tons and tons of different characters that are really good staple equipment across like a like th look at this. This is how many characters you're going to be using this equipment on. Okay versus versus something like this. Guess how many equip guess how many characters you're going to be using this equipment on? This. You tell me what's more worth it. So there's no point in doing that. And I think a lot of these um awakened equipments are all if you're not going to be spending money on the item that lets you reroll slot 1, which certainly is not worth it for 99.9999999% of the player base. I think the equipment uh, awakening system is also a scam. This is like one of the biggest 
uh, like I, I guess L's in the game. <laughs> this this system is horrible. This might be the worst system I've ever seen in any game. Period. the The overall equipment system in this game is actually just so bad. Like they it, they need to just get get rid of the entire system and just start from scratch again. I'm I, I literally again. I have over 1100 God rank equipment. I would literally be happy if they just scrapped the entire system and just started over, <laughs> made it like a not terrible system. I would be okay with it. Um, so I, I don't, I, what I would say for somebody like somebody like this, uh, who's asking like, how should you, how, how should you work with equipment as maybe somebody who's like a free to play player or a low spending player? What I would say is like, just get an, get a, get an S I'd say an S is probably good enough for most equips, right? Think about the fact that, let me just pick a random piece of equipment. I don't know if we scroll the way down, we get more modern ones. I think is how this works. Um, this Broly one, for example, right? So like, what is the difference between an S and like a, a godly equip? Let's just say you have like, I don't know, like 8% special move damage instead of 10%. You got 8% health instead of 10%. And then you got like, I don't know, like 15% base strike and 8% and to pure strike here. That would probably be an S. And when you add up the differences between the max rolls and what you have in this, in like the example I just gave, you're really not going to notice a big difference when you're actually playing the game. So in that way, it's a scam as well. So there's just a million different ways and angles you can look at the equipment system in this game to come to the conclusion that it is just straight up a scam. There is no reason for you to be aiming for anything over an S. And I've been saying this for a long time, but, but the only equipment that you do definitely want above an S on are things like this, because you need, like, you cannot use guaranteed upgrades for slot three and it's going to take you inevitably, you know, unless you get super lucky, it's going to take you hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of remo slot removers and, you know, a billions and billions of Zenny and tons of, of souls and all these different resources to get the slot three here, because the difference between uh, a green slot, a gold slot and a red slot, like the, the difference between a gold slot and a red slot in slot three is like a passive. It's, it's like a full unique ability difference. <laughs> So I would just say for the majority of players, unless you're in a very unique situation where like you only main the Android team or something and you need this equipment, like just just skip these equips. There's literally no reason for you to even look at this because you're, you're, you're wasting your resources on an equipment that's only going to be usable for one character and it's just not going to be beneficial. It's not an effective use of your resources. So I, I, I just think the equipment system in this game is beyond horrible. It is really, really bad. It is just garbage, man. I, as somebody that has probably better equipment than everybody else in the world, I, I think I've earned the right to say that the equipment system in this game is really bad. Really, really bad. Um, how would you fix Perfect Vanish in PvP to make it more skill-based? Perfect Vanish to make it more skill-based? So the only time you can really aim for perfect vanish is when you notice a certain pattern in your opponent's play style. So a lot of times when I'm fighting an opponent and I notice that they are going for sidesteps immediately into cards, that tells me that they already have the card pressed when they're sidestepping. So what you can do if you see that is whenever you see the opponent sidestepping, you then input your sidestep and a lot of times that will result in you perfect vanishing the opponent. That's just an example, right? So you can actually time your perfect vanishes if you can establish different input patterns that your opponent is doing. But other than that, it's a lot of times just gonna be luck. What would you add or remove to bring the fun back? And what was the, t and what, and was the tackle step meta actually my thing or just something to endure? Uh, so the tackle step, I think what he means by tackle step is when you would, see so you'd be able to sidestep and then go into a tackle and then use a card and then sidestep and go into a tackle and use a card and sidestep and go into a tackle and use a card. So it would just be like this very, very long drawn. This was, when was this a thing? This was, I want to say right when the original Super Saiyan 4 dropped, tackle step was kind of at its peak. And then I think they removed it shortly afterwards. Um, it was not my thing because it just added a lot of unnecessary like just time sync into each match. 
I didn't really think it added a lot to the game, so I'm glad that they removed that. Uh, what would I add or remove to, the, to bring the fun back? It's hard to say right now, and the reason why is because I think the most important thing that they should do is remove Perfect Vanish. Um, but again, you can't just remove Perfect Vanish. I mean, I've been saying this for a long time. You can't just remove Perfect Vanish and then wipe your hands clean, and then that's the end of the, of the change. You need to remove Perfect Vanish and then figure out what other changes to make to make the game feel interactive again. Because I think if you just remove Perfect Vanish, what you're going to see is you're just going to see characters like Ultimate Gohan just sit in long range and just spam blue cards over and over and over again. And the reason why you can't really do that right now is because you have the you always have the fear to get PV'd if you're somebody who's just spamming blue cards in long range with, with a long range blue card character. Um, so I think long range blue cards become a lot more powerful if you remove perfect you remove perfect vanish. I think AOE green cards get a lot more powerful if you remove perfect vanish. Um, so there's certain things they would need to look at and then make further changes on. But I think in order to figure out what those changes are, you first need to do like a full fledged season of PVP without perfect vanish. Let people test it and then they can gather the data they need to make a determination as to what other changes they need to put in the game. So it's hard to just look at this right now and be like, OK, here's what they need to do. Remove Perfect Vanish and then do A, B, C, D. Like, I don't know what those A, B, C and D are going to be unless we test it first. So it's hard to say. What is character slash mechanics or anything in general you would like to add to the Legends? Um, so anything that is just unique and innovative, right? I mean, I mentioned this in the last video. Take a look at like every release this year. Nothing new or innovative, nothing new or innovative. Um, this guy and Frieza, I would say, yeah, Frieza has the first character with comeback, so he's, yeah, give him like half a point. Gogeta is only the second character ever to have the um, arts action mechanic, so I'd give him like half a point because, yeah, it's kind of new, kind of new. Uh, this Gohan, new, nothing new or innovative. Let's take a look at the LFs this year. Um, nothing new or innovative. 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 Yeah, the, the, these were the dynamite releases of this year. Synchro gauge, new mechanic. You have uh, anti-rising rush guessing mechanic. You have assault chain mechanic. These characters had tons of new mechanics. So these these were the by far, in my opinion, the best releases of the year because they actually brought like brand new functionality to the game. Nothing new or innovative. Nothing new or innovative. Nothing new or innovative. Nothing new or innovative. So. My biggest concern with the game is they're just releasing the same character 17 times in the year, right? I, again, I would just say, what is the difference between Gotenks and Tree of Might Goku? They have very slight differences, but 80 to 85% of, of these characters are the exact same. There is no gigantic differentiation that you can make between Gotenks and Tree of Might Goku besides like like 10 to 15 percent of what they're doing which is not good you need to have more differentiation between characters to make it interesting um so in terms of like specific mechanics i would add to the i would add to legends it's hard to say because it's just anything that is different <laughs> like just add a different me make up something I, it can't be that hard man <laughs> it cannot be just do something creative i guess is what i want them to do uh do you think we're getting another Dima Banner before Legends Fest or right when it starts. I, I don't know how often they want to do Dima Banners. Um, I was actually very surprised to see one for episode four. I believe they called it the episode four celebration banner, which was weird. Um, I, I think it's possible they could actually drop one in the middle of Legends Fest. I don't know. I think it's just going to depend on what happens in the show. I mean, I. I don't know what's going to happen in the show, but I think there's a good chance that part two could be something Dima related, depending on what happens. But I mean, if we're going episode like seven, eight, nine, ten, there's got to be something in there worth releasing. So I would imagine that something during Legends Fest will trigger a banner. I think we'll see. Do you think it would be a good idea to add a system that allows you to change held cards on characters? Ideally, you would only change either of the two held cards into a basic striker blast. Hmm. Could be interesting. Something actually that came to mind when I was reading this one, like what mechanics would I add to, to Legends? Something that could be interesting is like, what if they released, like, I don't know, we just make up a character. 
What if they release like a Namek Piccolo? Because I actually do really want a Namek Piccolo in the game because we don't have any right now. Uh, what if they added like a Legends Limited Namek Piccolo? And one of and his his specific unique mechanic is he would have a fifth card slot. So I'm just trying to think of the best way to describe this. What I'm what I'm imagining in my head. So you would have your four regular cards in your hand, right? But then he would have his own specific fifth card. So I guess you could sort of put it where the synchro gauge icon is. I'm just thinking about this out loud. That would be his specific fifth arts card. And what it would be is I guess we could just call it like a, like a strike card. He would have a fifth card. It would always be a strike card and it would have like a 20 count cooldown. So you'd be able to have access to your four cards that you normally would have access to like a normal hand. But then if you like run out of cards or you want to use a strike or something, you always have an option to use that like fifth strike card. But then once you use it, it goes on cooldown for 20 counts. I think that could be like a pretty cool mechanic that could add to the game. That's much different than anything we've seen. Um, that kind of the, reading this kind of reminded me of that. And so like, yeah, that I guess that would be my answer to this guy's question. Like what mechanic do I think I would like to add to, to the legends? They could get really cre creative with that. Like imagine they give someone like a blue card or, or like a green card as like a fifth card they they hold. Um, change held cards. I mean, it, it, it basic striker blast. I, mean, I don't really see how that would backfire. I guess depending on the meta, you would want to change that, right? So if you're going up against a meta where you're fighting a lot of like Majin Vegetas, you probably want more strikes to not have to worry as much about the, the counter gauge. It could be interesting. I think they that's something they could play around with. I don't think this sounds relatively toxic or anything like that. Do you think Legend still has any chance of getting Heroes characters now that the latter is officially ending? Uh, no, probably not. Probably not. With this unique equipment makes uh, LF Super Vegeta into the top 10, what would you give him to make him a top tier unit and see more play? Uh, 35, 35, 10 to just defenses, 20% health, more defense. Or we're, we're, we're really going all in with the defense here. So he's getting 70% to base defenses, 20% health restoration, 20% health. 20% health is a lot. Uh, base gear recovery 70%, minus 7 to blast and strike art, supplies falling effects itself when this character uses special arts, nullifies enemy special actions for 5 counts, falling effects occur when the unique gauge is full and this character uses special move arts, resets unique gauge to 0, shows an advantage gauge by 80%, randomly draws at most 2 new cards. The main issue with Vegeta is just his gauge takes way too long to fill up, so he would need some type of uh, charge rate increase somewhere. Either that or he starts, like, just have him start with half the unique gauge filled up or something. That would make him a lot better. He would need some something like that in his kit somewhere. Uh, what makes a week dead for me? Is there a threshold or specified amount of content that needs to be in order for a week to not be classified as dead? I think the biggest thing for me is when they release something, like, a, like, like an update for a week that has absolutely no impact whatsoever. I'm trying to, like... They release like the Deborah Zenkai. That gives me one video that I can make. And I used Deborah once. He's beyond horrible. And like, what purpose does the week serve? I just, it, it has less to do with the amount of content they release as opposed to the quality of the content, right? They could release a million like they could they could do remember when they used to do like the, the the teams we would have like the the cyberman team we'd have the a pool team all those different teams that would really like that was a lot of content you release a full team of free characters unfortunately they were always terrible so there was a lot of quantity in content but the quality was terrible and i think for me I look at like when they release those teams, I release those weeks. I look at those weeks in the same lens as I'm looking at characters like Blue Deborah Zenkai. Obviously, there's a lot more content when it comes to like the full free to play teams that are releasing, but there's really not much of a difference to me because they're both they're, they're both worthless. They're both useless. So I, I think it's more to do with the quality of the content as opposed to just how much content they're releasing. And that's why I thought a lot of the Z movie celebration was really, really dead too. Like Broly, Broly could have been such a crazy release. He had like crazy animations. I thought uh, Videl was also a dud. The 1% sparking Videl on his banner was also a nothing burger. 
So they released that banner. Could have actually been pretty good. Could have been decent content, but ended up being nothing. Then we get the Mega Rising banner with Garlic Jr. and, and Goku and Piccolo. Um, I definitely thought that Garlic Jr. should have been better. I mean, he, he was a good defensive character, but he, he served no purpose other than just sitting there and soaking damage. Goku and Piccolo weren't even close to good enough. So that also kind of seemed like a dead period to me as well. Um, and then we get into the uh, Goku banner. I mean, this is another perfect example too, right? The Tree of My Goku banner. Five new sparkings at one time on the same banner, theoretically, should have been insane. But the only good character on that banner was Goku. So when it comes to the when it, at the end of the day, when it comes to saying how good was the content, well, we really only got one good character up until Tree of My Goku and Turles, right? Tree of My Goku was the only good character starting from the beginning of the Z movie celebration up until he dropped. Like a month and a half into the celebration, we got one good character. And then Turles was the second one. Like, that's what makes it dead to me. Not the quantity, because we actually did get a fair amount of quantity of content during the, the, Z, the Z movie celebration, but the quality was horrible. Worst year ever in terms of content. No, you, you did not play the game in 2021. <laughs> 2021, up until Legends Fest, 2021 was a nightmare. Uh, LOE likely to get buffed in Fest. Who slash what buffs do you want to see? Uh, likely to get buffed? <sighs> Probably not likely. Depends on what they want to do with the what if character, I would say the most. Um, the buff I would want to see is game originals Frieza and Cooler. That's my most wanted character probably at this point. Um, I could see maybe in part two they could do potentially like a metal cooler that has like multiple revives. Something could be interesting. Um, but it's other than that, it's like tough to see an LOE buff before uh, the end of Legends Fest. Who is the most underwhelming summonable character in my opinion day one? This guy was really bad. Definitely not Super Vegeta or the tag uh, Goku and Vegeta from the Buu Saga. No. You can't compare these guys to this Vegeta. This Vegeta... <sighs> this Vegeta was really bad. This guy was really bad. Yellow Saiyan Saga Goku was really bad. Blue Buu Tanks was really bad. Red Pycon was really bad. Red Kefla from the third anniversary was really bad. I would have to think about who the actual worst character ever was. I might make that a video, actually. Would you guys want to see that? The worst ever summonable character released in the history of Dragon Ball Legends. There's some really old characters we could talk about as well. Like if we scroll all the way down here, back to when the game first dropped, who were some really bad old characters? Um, Ginyu was all right. Pycon was actually pretty good pretty good i mean this guy's not a summonable character he was okay he was good this turlis was so bad they actually emergency buffed this guy purple turlis both purple turlis and where's green cooler i don't know why green cooler is not down here am i missing something why is he not here this guy released on the same banner as green it was it was uh this turlis green cooler up, up here for some reason and then uh, purple one-handed spirit bomb goku all came out on the same banner i don't know where's that purple spirit bomb goku here he is this spirit bomb goku green turles and and purple turles or green cooler and purple turles all released in the same banner purple turles and green cooler both got emergency buffs because they were actually terrible so like they're in the running as well um heartfires goku actually believe it or not was good on release blue krillin was bad uh who anything any other like insanely bad characters that pop out to me just briefly here um insanely bad characters hercule was really bad he was terrible um super saiyan 2 trunks wasn't that bad purple goku black was bad but he wasn't like worst ever release material um, this guy was definitely not as bad as some other units. Blue, blue Nappa's down here, huh? Okay, he's, he was not even that old. Uh, Yellow Bojack was pretty bad. Yeah, I'd have to, I would have to look through the list more closely. Great Saiyan 2 wasn't the greatest. 
Um, I have to look through the list more closely, but there, there's a few like really old characters that are in contention for like really, really, really bad. Bunny Bulma was pretty bad. <laughs> Bunny Bulma was pretty bad. Uh, I'm looking for that. Uh, like, where's like the Rage Vegeta? Did we? Did we? We, we passed him. We had to have passed him. Let me actually go all the way up. If we just type two in, he should pop up. The purple rage Vegeta. Where is he at? He was terrible. This guy. Oh my god, he was so bad. They actually, if you guys weren't playing back like in the very first year of the game, they used to actually sell characters directly in the shop. They would what they would do is there would be the ultra it would be the ultra space time banner. It would be the, the, the banner format. That was like year one is when they would have that banner format one of the featured characters on the banner can we is there a way to pull this up no nah, there's not um one of the featured characters on the banner so this guy came out alongside i think it was purple i think it was um no it was uh, green ultimate gohan and who else did he come out with god i can't remember this guy came out with green ultimate gohan it was ex evil boo on that banner too it was like the best unit in the game I can't remember the last one. Damn. I can't remember the last character he came with. Um, it was one more character. And they put, they, they put um, Rage Vegeta in the shop as a purchasable character. This guy was really bad. <laughs> he was just terrible. Um, so, yeah. Uh, there, there, there's a few contenders for, like, worst summonable character ever. I, I don't know. I, I might make a video on it to talk about it. But... Um, it's pretty funny looking back and seeing how bad some of these units were. Ice Shenron was pretty bad. I'll tell you right now, Ice Shenron is not nearly as bad as like that Rage Vegeta was. Why is this a thing in 2024? No idea. No idea. Which characters did I hate to uh, bring to 14 stars just for the sake of the showcase? Um, Definitely uh, this guy. Hold on, let me scroll all the way. Oh, we can get rid of this. Very recent character, this guy. I had a godly session on the Tree of Mike Goku banner. I finished Tree of Mike Goku like super fast. And then to 14 star, this guy took me like 90 KCC. And he's terrible. So, yeah. Definitely that guy. Do I think they should stop doing these episode campaigns and make them a tag campaign? Like, for instance, one month is Androids and the next month is Regen. Or do you think they should add more to the episode campaigns, events, missions, and exchange shops? Uh, yeah, I think they should scrap the episode campaigns. To be honest, they already have really scrapped the episode campaigns. Right? I mean, I, they haven't been doing it the same way they have been doing before the anniversary. We had the Z Movies campaign, which I, I guess isn't really an episode campaign, right? It wasn't it wasn't marketed as an episode campaign. And then we had the uh, the Boo Saga campaign, but it also wasn't marketed as a Boo Saga campaign. But I think the way that they should do it, and I mentioned this in the, the last video I did, is I think they should just not do campaigns in general. That's my hot take on this. They, sh they just shouldn't do campaigns, and the releases should be focused on just the characters that would best fit it, the teams that need help the most so like i don't know let's go back to the list of teams like what team really needs help right now get uh frieza force frieza force i would say is a team that like really desperately needs help so like they could say okay frieza force is going to be one of these teams maybe like um androids is a team that could definitely use a lot of help and then let's just say future is a team that could use a lot of help and then how about like uh, Vegeta Clan? I can't find Vegeta Clan. Here we go. And let's, let's say Vegeta Clan team that needs help. So they would pick out the teams that need the help. And then they would schedule out a bunch of releases that would help the teams that need help get the help that they need. So I don't think we need to focus too much on the campaigns themselves, but just m make it about the characters. And that's the way that I think the, the, the game would be much better off. I thought about maybe making them tag campaigns instead of episode campaigns so, like you could have a month where it's like okay let's just do the the vegeta clan you know buffing session and then we could have another month where it's the hybrid saiyan campaign or something like that but i think even more than this it's just much more efficient and better not to even worry about like don't 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 lock yourself into a specific episode don't lock yourself into a specific tag just focus on the releases one at a time that's what i would say 
All right, we'll do a few more here. How would I feel about a celebration featuring a new LFZ Bardock? A Zenkai for the red Bardock, the one that puts on the headband and a second plat for LF Yellow Bardock. Yeah, Bardock is popular. Um, I think it's kind of weird that we haven't gotten a Zenkai for the red one. He was a very polarizing release because he was he was the only character that had a restriction for his transformation. I felt like Dokkan, like why are they restricting the transformation? He actually couldn't like click on his main ability to transform unless he had like a dead ally. It was really weird. Do you think the next year Vegeta clan will be treated the same way GT was treated this year? We don't have a new Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. We don't have a new Trunks. They skipped a lot of Zenkai's. Ultra Majin Vegeta doesn't buff Vegeta clan with a Z ability. Yeah, that is such a why. That makes no sense. Why does he not buff Vegeta Clan with his Z ability? I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. Why does he not do that? Um, you know, if you look back at this year, we actually have gotten a lot of Vegeta Clan buffs. That's the sad part. Ultra Majin Vegeta. Fusing Super Vegito. Fusing Gogeta Blue. Vegeta and Nappa. Super Vegeta. Bulla. Like, that's a lot. <laughs> that's, that's a lot. Summonable Ultra, LF, 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 1% sparking. That's a lot. It's just, they can't get the team right. I, they just can't do it. So I don't think so. I don't think they're going to do a full year of, of Vegeta Clan. I actually am against the fact that they are just going to be spending an entire year buffing a team. I, I, I think it's just not good. Um, to do it that way. So I'd actually hope that we don't have another year of um, Universe Reps. We don't have another year of GT. I think they should just, again, do it the way I just said, where they just do it based on character releases individually. Uh, when would you suspect we'll get an LF Ultra and who would you like? I think the first LF Ultra, I would probably say Legends Fest 25 would be my opinion on the first LF ultra character and the reason why i'm saying that is because again we talked about this in the last video i think the point at which they will start to do lf ultra characters will be once they have already used all of the super hype characters as ultras so i think we have a few left like we have like um ultra instinct goku hasn't doesn't have an ultra yet beast gohan doesn't have an ultra yet uh fusion zamasu doesn't have an ultra yet full power broly doesn't have an ultra um we can get characters like Cell and stuff like that as well, like sort of mixed in here. But once we get through all the super mega hype characters as Ultra, then they start to implement LF Ultras. And then guess what? Then we go through the list again. Super Gogeta, Super Vegito, Vegito Blue, Gogeta Blue. You know, all the characters again, UI Goku. Like we just do the same thing again as LF Ultra character releases. Um, and I think we're probably still about a year away from that because they still have a few to get through. So we'll see. Uh, what do I think about the current Ultra banner format? It is horrible. Does it need a complete overhaul? Yes. Should older Ultras return after a while? Yes. Does the format need only a slight change? No. I think it needs to be completely changed. Also, how do you think the overbuffing slash toxic meta problem could be improved? Um, okay, so we got a bunch of different questions here. Uh, so first of all, the Ultra banner format is terrible. I think we would all agree with that. I don't think there's anybody sitting here thinking like, oh, the Ultra Banner format's really good. Like they're doing things like bringing back Ultra Hits Banner. They're doing things like bringing back Ultra Vegito Blues Banner instead of taking these existing Ultras that have been in the game for years and years and years and just putting them on new Ultra Banners. Like let's let's go to the, uh, I don't know, the um, Majin, Majin Vegito Banner still up, right? Is it? Yeah. Like why is Super Gogeta or Blue Kaioken Goku not on here instead of like this Majin Vegeta or Bardock or the Tag Fours or Revival. Why is Revival Blue Goku on here? Makes no sense. <laughs> why is he here? Like get this guy out of here and just put another Ultra on here. Like why? Why not? Why are you putting that much emphasis on Ultra Ultra characters? And then also add summon coins to this banner. Why do Ultra banners not have summon coins? It's just it's just greed, just pure greed. Uh, how do I think the over buffing slash toxic meta problem could be improved? Um, I could probably do like a full video talking about this, but I think one big problem again is that like 
every character is just the same character without having like 10% of their kits being the same. Uh, I think a lot of the mechanics in this game and a lot of the kits in this game need to be consolidated heavily and standardized. So like every character just having like 200% damage and 70% reduced damage received and key recovery and card draw speed and cover null and cost reduction. Like why does every character just need to have that? Why can't we just have that built into the base of a character? And then just like have very short and concise unique abilities that actually tell you what the differences are between characters instead of 80% of the descriptions of unique abilities being the exact same across the entire game. I think that is like the, the, the bloat in descriptions of characters mechanics is is just it needs to go it's way too much everything needs to be just cut down and standardized and then you'll notice where characters are different and then they need to expand on the differences that's what needs to be done all right we'll make this the last one with how bad most banners except go tanks oh i think we already talked about this last time. i think we did this already um yeah we did that already uh we talked about this already as well we did, yeah, we, okay, we did this already too. Uh, we talked about this already too. <laughs> okay, so we're getting through a lot of the comments that I already did last time. Did this one. Did this one. Oh, this is the same comment. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just, I'll just make another comment on this. Um, I don't think the trailer means anything. Um, I mean, I, it's always possible that it does, but if you look at the you know legends fest coming soon trailers for every year there really isn't much of a correlation between the trailers and the actual characters that come out so i would put very little stock in this we'll see though um i think i talked about this last time as well uh okay this is a new one i haven't done this one yet okay so we'll make this the final one do you think they should implement character reworks into the game kind of like how the buffs they did for Goku and Frieza and like the upgrades they gave to Shallot at Sparking Rarity. I believe this could help some LF units and some older Zenkais instead of just giving equipment. Um, I don't think they would do that. I don't think we will ever see, well, I don't know if I want to say ever, but I, I highly doubt we would ever see something like the Goku and Frieza buffs ever again. I don't think that's something that they want to do moving forward. Um, I think they've established that the way that they're going to be touching characters that aren't performing as well as they should be performing is through equipment or potentially through Zenkai's. I mean, take a look at the Boo Duo. The Boo Duo came out in April 2023. Or maybe it was March. I think was it? No, it was, it was April. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure it was mid-April. Um, they came out in April 2023. They got a unique equipment very quickly, and they already have a Zenkai Awakening. Right. A character that came out right before the fifth anniversary, which is very recent. Um, so that's the way that they're going to do things. I think they are aware that characters like the Boo Duo were severely undertuned. They're aware that characters like Super Vegeta were severely undertuned. They're aware that characters like Broly and uh, God Goku um, are severely undertuned, but. I don't think they're going to be doing anything like character reworks um, like, they did, like they did for Goku and Frieza just because I, that's not something they want to do moving forward. Um, do I think they should? Um, I don't know what type of resource investment that takes. It's hard for me to answer this without having insight into how like the development process actually works. So like for a character like, let's just say Super Vegeta. Super Vegeta is designed, his model is created, his animations are created, a significant amount of time and effort goes into making Super Vegeta. They release Super Vegeta. It is determined within like a week that Super Vegeta is not good enough. Do they then want to want to invest more time and more resources into revamping how Super Vegeta works? Or do they want to just focus more so on characters moving forward and then at some point in the near future release an equipment or a Zenkai for him that will fix the way that he was initially supposed to be? Right, which is the better choice on their end? I I don't know. Um, I, from, from a player's standpoint, obviously people would want to see him be adjusted. So like, again, 
a two week period goes by and Super Vegeta just is not performing as well as he should be. From a player's perspective, I would want them to, to change him. I would I would want them to go into the game and say, hey, we, we recognize that this character is not performing as well as, as you know he should be performing. We understand that people spent their Chrono Crystals on this character and they're a bit disappointed in his performance. Here are the changes we're going to make so that he's performing to a level that we feel comfortable with. Yeah, me as a player, that's what I would want. But I don't know how that's going to play into their development cycle. I think that's the question. I just don't know the answer. Uh, but obviously, from a player's perspective, yes, I would. I think they should implement character reworks, but I don't know how feasible it is. So there we go. Uh, this is going to be part two of the Q&A session. I think this is what's one that actually is almost an hour, a little bit longer than the one before. Uh, maybe I'll do another one of these pretty soon. Maybe I'll make it surrounding a theme um, instead of just general Q&A, because we still have about a week and a half before Legends Fest actually begins. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and I will see you in the next one.